Okay, so this is a bit of a prequel to the video I put up the other day about the curtain pole hooks. And it suddenly occurred to me I could show you actually how to make those shepherd's crook finials. Um, use these for all sorts of things, curtain poles obviously, uh, drop bolts for gates, um, pull handles, all sorts of things, limited to your imagination. So anyway, I've got two more to make for the same job, not for curtain poles this time, but the customer wanted to keep the same theme going, so I'm going to use 16mm round this time. So let's have a go at those. So, I'm going to use the big hammer to start with. Take a bit of beating over the beak and give it some beans. This is where I could really do with a power hammer with these sort of bits. It's um, not only pretty hard on my bad hand, which is my left hand, but it also gives my right shoulder and elbow a bit of a going over. But still, that's what happens when you've spent a lifetime fighting iron. You can see how it's coming down quite quickly using it over the beak. Just flatten it off a bit, take out any of the real bad hammer marks. And that's not bad. We'll just do it a little bit more. Bring it down a bit thinner. Keep it fairly even. I think I've said it before, your, your ham, hammer hand just goes up and down basically and your left hand moves your material under it just like you would if you were using a power hammer. That's just about it I think. We can start rounding that off. So we'll go down the, the sort of diagonals now. Just keep going down them. Uh, and all the new marks that are made, you keep going down them, eventually it comes round. I'm going to go on to the smaller hammer now to take out those marks and hopefully get it nice and round. Although it's not always guaranteed. Right, so now just Gently going down all the the ridges because every time you move it a touch, you'll make a new ridge. So you just have to keep going round and round and round, moving or hammering out each ridge. And it gets better as it gets colder. So when you're doing it hot, you're, you're still producing quite a lot of marks, hammer marks. As it cools down, you keep hammering and it doesn't produce so many marks for some reason, it gets rid of them. So that's why you want to keep going till it's almost cold. That's when you really get your hammer marks out. We're almost there, I think. Pretty close. I used to spend an awful lot of time doing this, making it almost perfect. And then I sort of realised that it almost took away the fact that it was handmade because it looked too good. So I tend to leave a few hammer marks in it these days. Oh yeah, reminds me, bouncing the hammer, why do you do it? Well I don't, it's accident, Look, it's just too hard surfaces bouncing on each other. You don't have to touch it or hold it and it was, will bounce. People say, why do you do it? You don't do it on purpose. It's harder to stop it bouncing than to just let it bounce. So when you're not on the work, you let it bounce on the anvil face. Simple as that. I think some people do it for effect, but uh, I don't. It's just one of those things that happens. All right, you can see 
focus. You see it's almost got all the hammer marks out. There's still a few in there. As I say, it gives it the, the handmade look. So the other thing I want to do is, once I've done the first one, put chalk mark on the anvil as to how long it's going to be. So that when I do the next one, I'll know where I want the taper to, to run from. So that hopefully when you coil it up, you'll get two very similar ones. You do it on your first one, you don't necessarily have any sort of measurements to go by, you just do it on your first one, because that's how you've done it naturally, and hopefully all the others will follow. Right, so just heat up the tip, tap it round, bring it back on itself, keep your left hand moving. See all the time the left hand's moving up, and that's because if you keep it still, you'll end up with a flat spot where you're hitting. There you go, get an idea. Yeah, you'll get a flat spot where you're hitting the top piece, the bit underneath that's resting on the anvil. You'll get a flat. I'm just going to spin that round now. Warm it up. So that's why you've always got to try and keep the metal moving. You don't get flats and nasty bits. I'm just going to cool out that very end that I've already done so that I can hit it with again without damaging it. And without damaging it as much as it would if it was hot. Because that would squash up very, very easily. All various ways of doing it. You can hit it down, pull it round. You could even probably do it with a a pair of um, sort of horns in the anvil, but I like to hammer it round. Should be hot enough again. Pull it round a bit more. Just knock it back. Again, you're going to get hammer marks in it. You can't avoid it because you know you've got to, to move it. But obviously, you want to reduce them as much as possible. And that's sort of almost it. You can open it up. You can pull it on a bit more. Do whatever you like. If you've got a drawing you're following, then obviously you've got to try and match it. But I haven't. I'm just making it how I would naturally make it. If you do it that way, it always makes life so much easier because you haven't got to force it to get the next one to copy it because they're all the same. So you've got a few hammer marks there. I'm just going to knock them out. Again, keeping everything moving so you don't get flats. And just work them out. Um, yeah, I was saying, if you, if you do everything in a natural way, you're not doing unnatural movements and forcing things, each piece should come out fairly similar because you're using your natural movements. So that's about that one. We'll get on with the second one. Now I'm just doing this one on the other end of the same bit of bar. Just looking at it from a different direction. See how much metal gets moved. It blows on the beak. Because again, this is actually a very long pole. It's going to be about six foot or so long. And I haven't got enough room between the wall and the anvil to, to actually do it. So I'm just going to make them the two in short lengths, or on a short length. Cut them off and weld them onto a longer bit of bar. Just makes life easier. If you've got plenty of room, then you can do it on a long, on the, you know, do one... We'll do, do them both on the long bar if you can get your measurements right. But I tend to do one on the long bar and then a short one and weld it on just to get the exact measurements. Or as in this case, it's going to be dowelled because I need to take, put it. It needs to go through some um, holes. So we we'll push it through the hole and then put uh, the other finial lamp back on with a little grub screw. It's the same thing. Knocking off all the edges. You see, each time you run down it, you create another flat, and then gradually you create more and more and more and more flats 
which eventually will turn around. I'm sure I've mentioned it numerous times before in other videos. Never, never, never try and draw a piece of bar out keeping it round. Always make it square and then round it back off again because it will just split. It ends up twisting as you're twisting the bar trying to keep it round and it, it will split. There you go. As it's getting colder, the hammer marks come out much easier. Far off being there, there's still quite a few in there. Just going to check the length of it so far. That looks pretty good. Let's come right up to my chalk mark. Yeah, I'm going to leave it at that probably. And we'll just start curling it up. Same thing over the end. You can do it over the beak, but I find it quite convenient doing it over that rounded part of the anvil. Again, so you keep moving your your left hand as you're hitting it, and that's really all there is to it. Very simple, very quick. It's giving me a bit of chip. I don't think I'll be doing any more blacksmithing today. This will be it, these two. Otherwise I won't be sleeping tonight. Well, I won't sleep anyway, but I'll be in more pain than normal. Again, just bend it round. Knock it back if it's not long enough. See, that one's not going to be quite long enough, so I want to heat that up and push it back a bit more. A little bit hotter. Right, almost got that too hot. I'm just going to knock it back a little bit more. I've got the camera in a not particularly good place for showing this, but you get the idea. That's almost it, I think. Didn't quite need it that hot. Just again, just take off a few of the little hammer marks from shaping it. Again, keep it all moving. And you don't get any flats. That is, I think, going to call it a day at that. Just make sure it's level. That's about it. So I'll just go and give it a quick whiz on the uh, wire brush. Let you have a look. Alright, giving it a quick whiz on the wire brush. As you can see, most of the hammer marks have gone. This will go to the powder coaters and be powder coated black. That's as per the customer's request. See, there's a couple of bigger marks on the back there, but I'll, I can put that at the back. But again, it, it just shows it's handmade. You know, some of these things, factory-made, are too good. So, thanks for watching.